Hi everyone, this is Zoe from Sugar Street Studios. So nice to see you again. If you are new here, hello and welcome. This is the home of all sorts of fun cake art where I share with you my tips and tricks for just getting the most out of your cakes. If you are new here, consider subscribing. We would absolutely love to have you. And you know, if there's anything that occurs to you while you watch the video, just pop a message down below ask me and I will come back to you. So on today's program, this is part three of our series on cake textures. So if you haven't seen part one, part two, go check them out. We did grass, we did stone. In today's tutorial, I'm gonna be looking at three different ways that you can create really effective wood effects for your cakes. Number one, natural wood whether you're going for an ash or an oak or a mahogany, you can use these techniques to, um, to just create a, a natural wood which is useful for so many different things. Number two, painted wood. You don't always want uh, brown, do you? Uh, if you're doing a cute little baby shower cake, for example, you might want a nice kind of pink floor with a nice whitewash top over it. So uh, painted wood is a really, really useful one. So I'm gonna show you that in the second tip. And number three, wood bark. Now there are loads of different um, impression mats that you can buy to create wood bark out there on the market. I'm gonna show you a way how you can create wood bark without an impression mat. That is it. <laughs> So I'm gonna aim for an oak color here. I've mixed brown and yellow, and you can see I've left the gel colors quite streaky, so that when I roll out the paste, I'm getting a natural, almost like a wood grain already in it. Now you could just stop at that, that's how you could do it, but I'm just gonna add a little bit more uh, detailing to that and a bit more color. This is a wood grain stencil. Um, by pressing in, I'm creating a very faint impression um, into that fondant. And you can see I've not done it particularly regularly. I've done it all in the same direction, but not all over. And that's because I want to create something a little bit more organic. Going in with my Dresden tool, creating additional lines and additional knots gives help gives gives me that effect and just means that it just doesn't look so cookie cutter really to color it you want to use dusts i've used a mixture again with my with my tones of color um creams and browns and a little bit of black and i am building that color up slowly sticking with my horizontal grain always keep the grain in the same in the same direction and just build that up making sure that those knots are slightly darker and as you rub your brush over the sugar paste it will pick up that lovely faint indentation from the stencil that we that we pushed in and it's really effective you can do exactly the same but with a mahogany base and darker colors or ash and lighter colors I've chosen a grey for my base colour for the painted wood, um, but obviously you can choose whatever colour you like. Um, this effect looks great as floorboards, so mark out some uh, floorboards using a ruler and a, and a blade knife like I'm showing you here, and then you want to texture each plank, each board, using um, your, your tool as shown. Irregularity, some straight, some wobbly, and a few and a few knots, um, and then make sure that you go in between each of the planks just to soften those edges slightly. Once you're happy, you then want to paint the next tone up onto your sugar paste. I've got charcoal grey here mixed with um, a rejuvenated spirit, and I'm just applying again in horizontal strokes um, across my across my paste, and I'm going to increase the color depth of that bit by bit um, so that I can get a real distinction between the edges and the, the in-between bits of the, of the board. Once you're happy with that and it's dry, take some dry petal dust and really work in those cracks and crevices. I've used black and cream. That will probably work for most base colors actually, but just go gently and, and just use your sort of color intuition with what will work. But you just want to create uh, the impression that, that there's gaps, if you like, in between those uh, wood planks. So that, that really works. And then um, once you have done that and you're happy with it, um, 
you can create a lovely whitewash over the top. Don't be too heavy handed here. It's white petal dust and rejuvenated spirit or vodka painted over. Um, this colour will sink in, so you want to do it gradually and in stages. And if you put too much on, you can always blot it off with a little bit of kitchen towel. Uh, but once it has settled, you can see that it creates this really sort of lovely uh, limed look. For the wood bark, you're going to need sugar paste that has dried out to the base colour that you want. Leave it for a few hours and wafer paper torn into strips. You want that lovely jaggedy edge. You're probably going to need uh, you know, a few sheets of wafer paper here. Um, and then take your dried out paste um, and wet it simply with a brush and water and slowly begin to apply your torn strips of wafer paper. Now what you want to do, and you might see there that was accidental that piece, but you actually want to apply your strips in the same direction because bark peels the same way so don't be haphazard keep it all linear whichever linear way uh, you are going brush water on the underside and on the top you want to make sure that the wafer paper you know is is nicely sort of adhered to the sugar paste so just work your way across leaving some gaps of sugar paste in between Leave it for about 15 minutes and then take a rolling pin and push and press quite hard over the top. What that's going to do is it's going to open up that, that wafer paper even more and create more cracks. Now, if you want to add a little bit more texture, which I did, I went back in with some small torn strips of wafer paper and I'm just applying. I'm applying in layers all the time, again, attaching with a little bit of water. Once you are happy with how it looks, leave it to dry before you start dusting. Very, very important. Once it is dry, you can then go in with colour dusts of your choice. Um, again, think quite wide on your, on your colours, not just brown. I've gone for brown, I've gone for brown with ochre, I've gone for brown with a bit of grey, I've gone for two different colours of brown, and I am applying those bit by bit, colour layer by colour layer, rubbing in and what's happening is that those colors are absorbing into that gorgeous texture that we created giving you this lovely mottled organic look to the bark if you want to apply this to a round cake tier my suggestion is you make this in one big strip um, all prepared off the cake and then you wrap it around the cake afterwards or you can cut it into panels and stick it onto the cake that way. And that is it. Three ways to do wood. So you've got your sort of painted version, your natural version, and then your back to nature natural version, your wood bark. So I hope you have found that useful. So that is it guys, I really hope you enjoyed that and uh, it was so nice to see you. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and I will see you very soon, bye. Thank you.